Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Stoneblock 2. I did a few things in between episodes, but before we begin, uh, I want to just talk a little bit about what's going on IRL. In September, I'm going to be gone for firstly two weeks, then I'm going to be home for a couple days, and then I'm going to be gone for another like 10 days or so, uh, because I'm going on vacation with my girlfriend to Greece, because she only got her vacation off of her job in September. Uh, and in the half, the second vacation, sort of, is me going to Canada with my mom to visit relatives. So, basically, I need to record 20-ish videos if I want to have a video every day of August, at least every weekday, the same I've been doing normally. So, let me know down in the comments if you're okay with me recording, let's say, three videos per week, or uploading three videos per week, because that's gonna make my work for August much, much easier and I can spend some time with my girlfriend for the weekends and don't have to spend four weekends in August, basically just rec or in August, yeah, just recording videos because I would need, I would record two videos on Sunday or Saturday and two on Sunday and that would be four videos and then one extra video in the week or during the week and I could possibly do more videos but I think by the time August ends, I'm gonna just be dead. Uh, well, not really, but tired as hell, at least. So let me know down in the comments if you want to see five videos per week or three videos per week. I'll I'll do the best that I can. Maybe I can do like four videos or something. Uh, but just let me know down your opinions and what you think. So let's begin with today. As I've said in the last episode, armor upgrades. So magma boots, magma chest plate, magma leggings, and magma helmet. Uh, and we can replace that. Wonderful. Obsidian, you are trash canned. Wonderful. So I did that by making a mechanical drying basin and just putting in lava. And then that makes magma blocks. I can pulverize them to get uh, magma creme. And I had more magma blocks here. I was searching this entire chest and I didn't find them. Anyway, that's fine. So over here, I have some slimy magma mud. And I already made some green slimy magma mud, which is just slime balls, red sand, and dirt. And then the same for the blue slimy mud. And we can get these smelted. I'll just toss them in here for the moment. Like so. That should smelt all three. Uh, apparently not. One, two... Where's the blue? Where art thou blue? Slime. Da, 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 da. Where's the blue one going? Or are you smelting the blue one into green ones? It looks like it's like or dictionary. No, it's not. Okay, I'm I'm just blind. All right, never mind. Okay, so we can toss these three once I get rid of my overlay. There we go. With a night slime pickaxe head that I made in between episodes, and we can toss them on here, and that's gonna get us crumbling embossment, which is gonna make it basically break soft blocks faster that don't need a tool. So basically, uh, we break wood this fast now, which is lovely. And I apparently jumped down. Okay. So, uh, I want that just on my pickaxe. I think the hammer is fine on mining uh, just wood. And currently, I think this is obsidian stone. We could even upgrade this to, like, cobalt stone when we get to it, and you can still repair it with stone, but eventually we're going to make it unbreakable anyway, so it's going to be fine. Uh, all right, so this pickaxe is going to stay um, stone for the moment because we have four modifiers. Once we get, let's say, uh, five modifiers, we can make it unbreakable, and then actually we need to add more... Uh, redstone as well. So for the moment, uh, we're gonna replace one of the parts with prismarine. For some reason, uh, when you put this prismarine and makes aqua dynamic, which is unhindered by water and loves rainy evening, it's just weird, but this makes the speed uh, or makes it break um, stone instantly when you give it enough redstone. So if we take this uh, and just give it haste this, haste this, and haste Haste, this, 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 this. There we go. So that's as fast as the big X can be. Uh, actually, no, it can't be because cobalt is going to give it faster mining speed. So this shouldn't break stone instantly, right? Oh, it does. Hmm. Well. Okay. You don't need. Uh, you don't need what you call it. Uh, can I middle click this? Middle click. Thank you. Uh, so you don't need uh, co cobalt for my super speed mining speed, but that's how you get an instant mining pickaxe. So you're welcome, I guess. 
So over here, I made some concrete uh, from immersive engineering, which I think is a nicely look nice looking block. I'm not sure if I want to use this as the floor. And this was kind of like just a, a testing area here. And I want to leave a little bit of a gap uh, that's not going to be built up in between this room and whatever I'm going to build over there because I don't want to intrude into this room if I go like behind the wall and turn left and all that stuff. So I want to just leave a little bit of an area and we can just like either fill this in eventually or just uh, build a Patreon thank you room thingy mabob, uh, basically. So over here, I'm going to do a bunch of digging. And I think the first thing that I want to set up is a bunch of garden cloches. I'm going to make a few more uh, and I just want to automate all the things garden cloche. So basically potatoes, carrots, wheat, rice, hemp, canola, all that stuff. So uh, I think we're still going to go with canola power. Uh, firstly, I would want actually, you know what, now that I think about it, let's not do garden cloches right now. Let's get an automatic sieving production going because we need resources like redstone and gold and glowstone and all that, like gold we're running really low on. So what I'll do is I'll take the rest of my resources that I have, possibly need to do more sifting for some gold if we're going to need it. But I'm going to make some of the uh, lappy dappy stuff. So some of these which require just electrum, it requires some signalum, but I can't think we can make it. Do we Does it work in the simple alloy smelter? So that was copper, redstone. And what else was signalum? I always forget. Copper, redstone, silver. Uh, silver. Can I do this in here? Copper, silver, redstone. Nice. I don't know why you're not giving it power. Why are you out of fuel? Well, you're out of power. No. Apparently this guy is not getting enough power. All right. What we can do is break everything with my super pickaxe. But we have this this drum here, uh, and let's get some just basic fluid conduits. Uh, fluid conduit. Uh, let's just get some of these. These are just quite clear glass, which is just glass in an alloy smelter. Uh, so let's take these out, and this is going to take six years. All right, I'm going to have to wait for this to process. I'm going to make some fluid conduits. We have a bunch of refined canola oil, like five million buckets bits, and we're just going to take that. Put it over here because this is probably running low as well. Yeah, uh, and we're just gonna leave the drum here uh, Put the conduits here and then all the generators will start back up and we should have enough power to run everything I set up the fluid conduits here We have an extract on brown an insert on brown on this guy and then an extract on green and then an insert on green on everything else So the compression dynamo and all the generators are not running and producing power and I should probably have the generators hooked up to the capacitor bank and then the capacitor bank going to everything else, but it is a ghetto setup, so we're not going to worry about it. And it's just going to stay the way it is for now. Okay, <laughs> so over here, uh, I haven't done any more digging. Actually, I forgot to show you this. I made a few more, or a few of these storage cells, so we can start using our applied energistic system if we wanted to. Uh, I don't have enough uh, quartz and anything for cabling, so we're just going to tackle the sieving operation. Uh, like I said, so I'm gonna do a bit of digging to get some space going and we're probably just gonna fit it in the wall <clears throat> And I'm gonna make a bit more signalum. I think this guy is not making signalum right now. We need to uh, give it some more copper uh, Some more silver and some more redstone and that should produce us a bit of signalum as well uh, And I'm gonna make the the all of the things that I need the dynamos the the lappy dappy things and uh I'm going to take our meshes and we have a bunch of experience so we can just uh, get it enchanted. Uh, we can enchant the uh, the books with compressed dust to get sea block of the sea. Sea fortune is compressed ender gravel so we could get to to the end dimension because we can get end stone there. We could also put glowstone over lava to get that but that's going to require six years to get it. Uh, and since we have a, a butt ton of XP. Uh, we can just get a regular enchanting table and then make probably a disenchanter uh, of some kind. This requires draconium and I don't know if we've gotten any just yet. And I don't even know how you get it other than breeding chickens. I mean probably you can just mine the ore uh, in the mining dimension. It's just rare and everywhere. Uh, Alright, uh, so we don't have draconium so we can't get a disenchanter just yet. We could probably just toss... Uh, some sort of enchant on the sieves or just leave them be for the moment. I think we should be fine with without them. 
uh, and hopefully we make enough of the the crystals. And basically the idea here, we have three of the crystals. We're going to have three dynamos, each one using each of the crystals. And then we can upgrade the dynamos as we go and add more dynamos if we need to, to produce more of the uh, more power, basically. So uh, let me see how I want to set that up. And uh, we'll be back once I have something to show you. If we want to use our lappy dappy power to power the sieves, we're going to need the material stoner factories because they are more power efficient uh, per factory to produce uh, sand, gravel and uh, dust than me having a cobblestone generator and then three sets of pulverizers, each one using, I think in the end when they're fully upgraded, like 300 RF per tick or so. And I don't know how much the lappy dappy things produce with the peridots and the, uh, the rubies. Perry dot. Uh, how much do you make with your lappy dappy? You make two hundred thousand. It doesn't say how much a tick, uh, so we'll see. Uh, I have some pink slime. I made the tree fluid extractors. There is a mechanical user right here uh, on placing blocks and is placing wood, and then this guy is has power <laughs> wired over to here, uh, and this is making tiny dry rubber. I could be extracting it and crafting it up into. Uh, the big piles of rubber or the dry rubber and then smelting that into plastic automatically but this is just a ghetto setup again uh, but i made some ender fluid conduits uh, that i did that i used already here uh, and i use them here because we can transfer uh, water and the latex from this guy at the, in the same uh, block basically so we don't have to do some sort of weird cabling uh, and this pink slime is going to produce us uh, basically one pink slime and it's gonna make infinite pink slime because I think there's still a cheaty way to do it with compacting drawers I just need to wait for this guy to spawn and then I'm gonna kill it with my looting sword uh, and we should have it uh, have some pink slime there we go three pink slime that's all we need we can block this off like that and then if I grab a compacting drawer which which I do have over here uh, and we put this in here you can see slime blocks so if we come over here Let's say we grab uh, one, two, th that many blocks of slime, and then we can just uh, convert them back into regular slime balls. And then we can do that to make regular slime blocks. And we toss these in here, and boom, pink slime. Amazing. <laughs> so um, that's kind of cheaty, but it is cheaty. So it's all right. Uh, I made a bob slaughter factory, it's sitting right over there, it's currently killing the mobs and getting us pink slime, but we don't really need it anymore. So what I'll just do is uh, turn you off to be active with redstone signal, we're gonna hide the working area, grab my spectra coil back, well it's gonna be picked up by the thing underneath, but we can, uh, we can actually just go turn on the farm again by doing this, <clears throat> there we go, and in the back here we can grab her, grab her grab all other stuff and while I'm here we're gonna open up some uh, some crates and also add a census V crystal to the to the mix of our all our crystals there we go uh, but we have seven legendary loot crates so let's pop those we get a growth crystal tier 3 insanium essence this locator's draconium blocks we can get a disenchanter nice uh, and a cobblestone generator tier 5 not bad uh, where are my epics here, I think. Cop this, 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 this. Anything else? This. And I think that's it. All right. I'm going to keep the Triconium up top because we can make a Disenchanter if we wanted to. Uh, which uh, is going to help us with getting Sieve Enchants, actually. Uh, so let's take this guy down. And put this guy down. Like that. Awesome. So with the Pink Slime, I can now make uh, Material Stonework Factories. Stonework. So I'm going to craft uh, three total of those. It's not really difficult. It's just a lava bucket, a water bucket, and some crafting stuffs. Uh, I don't think I have enough plastic, so I'm going to have to grab some tiny rubbers here. And then we can just compress them into dry rubber and smelt them up. I used up the last of my gold to make all of the machines here. Uh, I have some of the, uh, some of the machines here. Uh, and I made some ducts. And I wanted to use ducts, but kind of... Don't know if I should for now because we can't get the big item filters which are the resonant ones because we don't have Enderium and we don't have Lumium and all that stuff because we don't have basic resources automated. So I think I'll just use item conduits for the moment. 
Uh, and I might not cover anything up for for now because we can just extract like diamonds and lapis and emeralds. All of that can be extracted uh, nicely through this guy because it can just compress it into a block of coal. We can also make a filter and just filter things out into two different crates or just into two different like drawer controllers or just conduit it away into a different spot because uh, this guy is really, really slow uh, with the regular mesh. So we just need to enchant these. Uh, I think with efficiency, the power increase is going to go up but by quite a bit. But I did make an enchanting table. We can't make a disenchanter because I'm out of gold and I need four, to four gold total. Uh, did, did we get any gold down here? You know what? We might have... Uh, I think I already took it, but I think we can get gold from these crates. Possibly. Uh, this is going to fill up this in insanely fast. Um, we need to clear some stuff out. So we're going to just do all the baits, all that stuff. Let me just do this. I don't know there's gold and stuff. So we're going to grab gold. We don't need the fluid cows. We're going to grab the iron. Do we need the bricks? Not really. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go through this because I need to get a tiny bit more gold. Uh, and uh, we should be good on getting uh, a disenchanter as well because I have an enchanting table here. I'm going to get some more bookshelves. We're going to open up this side here as well, probably. Uh, possibly up to here. Uh, and set up the disenchanter as well. Uh, and that's going to be really nice to just get whatever we want on these uh, sieves because we have infinite experience pretty much. So uh, let me just do that and we'll be back. I got all the meshes enchanted and we have sieve efficiency 5 and sieve fortune 3. And let's see how much this is going to spike. Oh no, the production is the same or the RF is the same. It's just going to produce more stuff faster, basically. All right. I'll, I'm, I'm down for that. It's still not super duper fast, but it is faster. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna, if it would be more efficient to do compressed stuff, but I don't think we will be able to produce compressed stuff fast enough. Plus, this is uh, keeping up with the lower level of uh, efficiency, uh, and I think it's only the sieve forge, uh, sieve luck of the sea that we can get onto here as well. So it's sieve efficiency, which is at five, sieve fortune, and then sieve luck, luck of the sea which is compressed dust, which we can get at some point and just use the enchanter to do it uh, and just attach it to the sieves. But for now, it's going to be fine, I think. So let me do a little bit of work. I'm going to set up the other two, probably just extend this and put it on the wall. And this is all going to be ghetto still. I think we're going to redo this much better once we have more resources. But for now, I just want to have an automatic way of producing all the chunks and we can possibly automate the smelting of the chunks as well. Um, yeah, we can probably do that. I've done a little bit of work and we have the power production over here separated from the sieving production and then the sieving production is right over here. Uh, I am currently just using compacting drawers to compact everything and then there's some regular drawers over here to store the rest of the things. Each one of them have a storage upgrade 5 to increase the storage by 32 times, which is going to last us quite a while, I think. Uh, and the next order of business is to extract the things that can be smelted. Uh, and or processed, so like uranium, the skystone dust we don't really need to process automatically, probably the black quartz or the crushed black quartz, uh, and then everything else I think can stay. So we need to extract those directly out of the drawers here. Uh, but I can use this to uh, not use RF to compact anything, we can just use the compacting drawers for that, because I wanted to use these auto compressors like I use all the time, uh, and I just decided to do compacting drawers because I haven't done that before with uh, making the ore chunks, basically. So the Lappy Dappy power isn't connected to those drawers just yet to transfer in the Peridots and the Sapphires and the Rubies. And currently just this guy is producing power. We're at 190 something RF a tick is what we're using. Basically, it's 40 per each of these machines. So that would be 80, 160, 200 and something power. Oh yeah, this guy's probably making... Uh, Oh no, these are both outputting 48 RF a tick, and then this guy is working a bit harder, so doing 190-ish. Okay, so that's basically 50, and 50 is 100. So around 300-ish RF uh, is what we need for this. Uh, and then I need to make some pulverizers and some redstone furnaces. I think two, three of each will be enough. 
Uh, I'm gonna also make the upgrade kits, and now that we have a, bu a bunch of gold, we can just toss all of this into our processor over there to uh, get some more gold going. I don't think I really need the iron or anything else right now, uh, so I think we should be fine on that. Uh, I'll be uh, moving these drawers where uh, we're gonna have the processing of the items as well. So we're gonna move the drawer controller over and all that good stuff, so that should be pretty cool. All right, I have added the redstone furnaces and the pulverizers, and for some reason they're not getting their input because I have the input set on the back. Of course I did, because I set it on the other side and I needed power to be transferred in the back. So we have this now. Okay, now are you doing your thing? You're doing your thing. Wonderful. Processed all the copper, or it is processing all the copper, and then it's gonna go to the next item and the next item and so forth. So we're getting our ingots stored in here, and that is lovely, we have our items stored in here which is lovely we can add like st uh, storage buses on the backs if we wanted to but i think all of this is going to be moved i just wanted to set up something that looks half decent uh, and gets us our resources so we have enough redstone and glowstone and emeralds and diamonds and all that uh, to get started on building other thi other things and putting uh, our work into maybe making the power better or with the canola and all that and I think I'll probably uh, have this left side as is for, I don't know, a couple episodes. And then we're going to go over here on the right and we're going to dig into the magical forest. Or possibly here on the left, we can probably just take this side and then dig a tunnel that way. And then open up a room and we can set up a proper room with sieves and all that at some point. Because I would really like to have these ducts visible, possibly. Because you can see the items going through, and maybe even use conveyor belts, but as far as I know, the extracting conveyor belts, uh, these guys, they can be turned off with redstone, but I think they make a lot of lag, even without just extracting items. So I don't know how we would exactly turn them on and off, or depending on how much probably we have in the drawers, could be a thing. Because we can take... We can use... Batania's red strength comparators, or we can just use integrated dynamics. We could also just use vanilla redstone and put these in the walls and have redstone in the back, but I don't know exactly how I would want to control everything. But if you have any ideas, let me know that in the comments as well. Uh, but I think this is going to be it for today. We did quite a bit of work. We have our kind of uh, power production for the moment. It's just going to be this, basically me grabbing stuff out of here and then tossing it in here manually. Uh, but for now, it's going to run at least. Uh, I can probably just make an ender chest and then put two conduits here in the back. Because uh, we probably have we have space up top if we wanted to. We could even bring the power one block higher uh, and then avoid that problem. Or we can just put an ender chest down here and filter out directly what we want uh, on, a, on a servo, for example. Uh, and we can just extract it directly into the drawers back there. You know what I can possibly do? I have enough cables. Let's just do this right now, okay? Let's gonna do it like this. And these shouldn't connect to anything, I don't think. Bam, bam, bam. Ghetto setup. And then we're gonna go back here. We can disconnect this guy, because we don't need you. And then up here, we're gonna grab one of each. And we're gonna put a servo here. And say, bam, bam, bam. And we're gonna whitelist. And enable. And that should start extracting everything. Wonderful. Do we have uh, void upgrades on these? I'm not sure. Um, we actually don't have to have void upgrades on these because we have void upgrades here. So we're just going to extract uh, out of these until those have 2,000 uh, items in each one of them. Uh, and that should be pretty cool. So now it's pretty much autonomous, which is really neat. All right. So with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed today's automation episode. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button. Also, you can consider blah, blah, blah. you can consider subscribing to see new videos. You can support me on Patreon if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye bye.